So for instance, the one we use at Hopkins has a million probes starting from the top of chromosome one and ending at the bottom of the, of the Y chromosome if you have one or the bottom of the X if you don't have one. Um, and so you can imagine we can see much, much, much smaller missing or we can't see them. We can detect much, much smaller or uh, missing or extra pieces. And so we have many, many more disorders that we've recognized because of chromosome, what are called chromosome microdeletions or chromosome microduplications. Okay. And initially when we started doing this test, we got all kinds of results that we had no, absolutely no idea what they meant. You know, is this real? Is it, is it important? Is it not important? Once we've gotten, we've probably done 20,000, 25,000 people, maybe even more, um, have been done by this method, both normal and, and, and people with problems. And once you have enough people, you can start statistically sorting out, you know, we see this in so many normal people, this is normal. This is not a disease-causing um, variation. Or we only see this in people with problems. This must be causative. Two normal people, two people without disease, can have as much as 12 million base pair variation in their DNA because of extra and missing pieces. So that's normal variation, 12 million base pairs, a whole lot. Whole exome sequencing looks at the coding portion of the genome. And the coding portion of the genome is about 1.5% of the genome. And it's the part that codes for protein so if we have 22,500 genes, it's looking at those, just the, co the, the part of the genome that codes for, for actual protein. And when you do whole genome sequencing, you are looking at the whole genome, all six billion base pairs from number one to number six billion. Before we do that test, we tell people we're gonna have four possible outcomes. One is we find a chromosomal variation that explains the problem in this patient. That's ideal, that's what we hope for. The other is we find totally normal result. Okay, well, this test didn't help us. We still have to keep going. The third possibility is that we find something that we don't understand. So we may have to do parental testing, we may have to, we may have to wait for more data to come down the pike over uh, some number of years. We just, it'll be a variant of unknown significance. And the fourth possibility is that we uncover something we weren't expecting to detect, like a cancer risk, like another later onset disease that we didn't look for at all, but we find by this method. So that's everyday current clinical practice. This is what we do for a living. We send this test.